Hey, for those of you who've joined in early, the session is about to begin in a few minutes. You can make yourself comfortable, probably, you know, grab a cup of coffee and a notepad because we are going to have an interesting session today. And yes, it's going to start in a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'm going to ask you for a quick little favor. This is more like the sound check, the usual sound check that we do. If you can hear my audio loud and clear, and if you can see my screen as well clearly, just make use of the chat window to let me know the same. Wonderful. Thank you for the confirmation, guys. We are all set and we will be starting in a few minutes. A very good afternoon. Thank you for having taken the time to have joined me in today's session. This is Jay from Manage Engine. First things first, before we get into today's presentation, for those of you who have questions during today's presentation, you can make use of the chat window to shoot your questions right at me. And we've got Cosmos Damien right here to take our questions right away. Yes. And for those of you who want a copy of today's presentation, I mean the video, all you got to do is through, through the session, probably uh, at the end of the session, you can just drop me a message with your email ID and I'd be more than happy to send you over the uh, video, all right? Great then. Today's session is on empowering your IT help desk for Active Directory Management. So before we get into the session, I'd like to start off with a quick question. How many of us would be excited or enthralled by the idea of bringing together industries two of most complex or to, to put so powerful technologies one active directory which is an identity access management tool and it services management tool which is service now that would be a very exciting combination so we are going to try and achieve that synergy today and that's our agenda all right so we're going to try and empower the it help desk not just the help desk, but then to go one step forward, one step further, we will be empowering every single user in the organization. How do I say that? Why do I say that? Pretty simple. Day in, day out, IT help desk gets bombarded with service requests all the time. It could be for anything. It could be uh, stuff like the usual ones where you know it's regarding the facilities modifications regarding users onboarding it's regarding password uh, resets the operations are endless and especially when it comes to active directory management the problem comes at the point where you have to switch between multiple consoles the problem comes at the point where you have to toggle between different applications to get that simple job done it might sound simple but then it in fact is proven to be a lot time consuming and not just that it is tedious too so we are trying to build a simple solution the idea behind finding the solution is to empower every single technician out there to perform an active directory management action without taking the pain of getting back to the native tools or the legacy tools that's the idea so perform active directory actions from within service now console your help desk right after you receive or right at the very same moment when you receive a service request for an active directory management action so that is the agenda for the day without any delay getting into the session so what are the top four challenges that any service now administrator especially the help desk faces the ones that are listed right here are the ones that you guys go through day and day out the first one is the one that most of us relate to the tedious day-to-day -day toggles. When it comes to user lifecycle management, it in fact is a very interesting subject. 
you know you have new joinees coming into your organization you get to make the accounts for those new joinees you get to create the start for the for those new joinees right so you, the, the, there's the hr communicating to you through an email asking you to probably you know have 15 new joinees onboarded and it's almost like what uh, it's going to like take half of your day already which is which is very evident and understandable that's because organizations don't stop with just a mere active directory account they go one step further it's not just active directory anymore the kind of rate at which organizations are growing the requirement that they have for cloud application let's say google apps or say for example office 365 so you need to provision accounts for all those users and onboard them across platforms in one single go. So that's the whole process behind onboarding. In fact, for that matter, there are organizations just to make sure that the backlogs in onboarding are avoided or the IT help desk is not overburdened. They've come up with something called as pre-boarding. It is pretty obvious employees, uh, you know, it, it's become a, a very common expectation among employees, especially the new joinees. They tend to expect a consumerized experience. They tend to expect uh, something that is, you know, easy for them. They are new to the organization. It's pretty obvious that they expect a very quick or a smooth onboarding process. And I personally believe it's the most important uh, task that IT help desk and the HR should work on because that's the very start of the career for that new journey. And it's important that it goes smooth. At the same time, it should not be a burden to the IT help desk as such. So we are trying to come up with a simple, straightforward, solution that's going to streamline the entire onboarding and the best part is the whole idea scales to whichever number you want so that's the best part so we do not want you to do the clumsy day-to-day -to -day toggle you do not necessarily need to toggle between multiple applications what am I talking about so you have a request on your service now console from your HR start of the day asking you to onboard users with basic details in that service request all right so you then jump to active directory you start creating an account and then you speak to the relevant line manager you ensure that the right credentials are given you ensure that the right shares are granted to that specific new journey and a lot more things like group membership a lot more on day one after having done that you switch to exchange to create mailbox and then you go to google apps to create an account or specific licenses not to forget office 365 or skype for business so the list goes on for one simple task of onboarding you have to spend nothing less than 30 40 minutes that's something that we can't afford to given the quantum of workload we already have so we're trying to have that all done away we are trying to have that all integrated into one single dashboard and perform that in one go you receive a request you look into the request check for the details and then submit the request and it's good to go like magic in active directory all the required attributes are populated and office 365 account is created exchange mailboxes are created Google Apps are provisioned. So it does sound a little hard to believe, but then through today's session, I'm going to walk you through as to exactly how to perform whatever I've been talking all this long. So that's the first part of today's session where we'll get rid of clumsy toggles, keep it simple, receive requests, onboard employees quickly, make it easy for everybody on an organization level. All right. So we're going to be talking about a 360 degree user provisioning of the first challenge we'll be solving. We'll go further to talk about error notifications. Ha, huh, this is a touchy subject. When it comes to uh, doing things the native way through legacy tools, there are always hassles of missing out on something that's pretty important. So the error notifications are not really clear. You do it through Active Directory or you do it through PowerShell. Hands down, PowerShell is really uh, powerful, no doubt about it, can get any of your job done. But then, but then, but then there are downsides of having to go through a technical training for having PowerShell scripts executed. Uh, there's a lot that goes behind uh, a simple task like, uh, you know, user onboarding if you have to do it the PowerShell way. I'm not really sure how many of you would be fans of PowerShell, but then 
to have the ambiguous state of affairs also covered you'd not know what went wrong when you execute a powershell you don't get clear messages we've got a system that tells you very clearly if something goes wrong it prompts you with clear error notifications and in fact for that matter it goes a step further tells you what exactly to do so all of that is going to happen from within the service now console all right and that's possible because of the integration we are discussing today and the next bit of the first challenge we'll be solving the part where you talk about standardizing naming formats all right so you have five help desk technicians onboarding users everybody's got their own format of creating a new user to the organization a new joining into the organization so that's going to kind of mess up the whole active directory sanity so we're trying to have the whole process streamlined and standardized and a lot more at the very beginning getting things right at the very start is what we are intending to do going further we're also talking about handling duplicates which is a big challenge when when it comes to organizations users with the same username that could cause a lot of trouble so we are going to try and stop duplicates or should i say also counter the problem of duplicates by a slight tweak uh, that's possible through the application and get those users also onboarded effectively all right so the first bit of today's session is going to be on solving the problem of toggling between multiple applications for user onboarding and we're talking about a simple straightforward streamlined smooth onboarding process Everybody's happy, the HR is happy, the new joiner is happy, and you're burden free. So that's the idea. To give you a just a backup for whatever I've been talking about, a simple script, not so simple actually, a script for user creation through PowerShell. Yes, no doubt it can get your job done, but what if you miss out on something that's important? What if you miss out a dollar sign? It, it, could, it, it could not get executed, so that's a problem. And you got to be technically trained to find out what went wrong. And going further, doing it through the native way, which is your Active Directory users and computers console. That again is going to be a problem because you can do only one thing at a time. Instead of toggling between all these applications, we are going to try and figure out a simple way that's going to ha have all of this sorted under one single window one single pane which is your service now dashboard all right that's the first challenge we'll be solving the second challenge that i'm going to be discussing is very relevant to the first challenge that we saw it's more like a subsidiary or a, 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 what do you say a subset of the first challenge the errors that occur during the process of user onboarding most of the time it's because you got to do it manually you receive a request you process the request, you interpret the data, you have it keyed in across platforms from, uh, you know, anything starting from an Excel sheet to an email, there comes the problem. So at many a times, if something goes wrong, you know who is blamed. It's us, the administrators or the help desk who gets blamed for some data misentry. So we don't want that to happen. So again, through the process that we'll be uh going through today or the walkthrough that i'm going to give you will help you have that problem solved as well you can check that problem out of your list no 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 need to worry anymore the product automatically fetches the data from the requests that get into the inbox the data automatically all those priority attributes all those important attributes things like the username the logon name the first and the last name the you know, department name or anything that could actually be of value is picked up from the request automatically and filled out in active directory so that saves a lot of trouble so right after the hr sends out a request you look into the request and have the user onboarded with no hassle at all so there's literally going to be no scope or no a way that something could go wrong in terms of data entry that again is going to be solved the next one is password management this is my favorite topic so users tend to forget their passwords all the time you can't do anything about it it's it's a normal course of happening and as per statistics of the hundred service requests that we get or service calls that we get the help desk gets close to 35 of them are for password management related queries or for password resets so in terms of productivity this is a huge time drainer given the quantum of workload that you already have to manage given the kind of tasks that you're already uh, entitled to do yes password management is something that can take a back seat that has to as a matter of fact take a back seat and you shouldn't be the one toggling between applications or getting to active directory resetting passwords that's something that you shouldn't waste your time on instead 
password management is going to be simple the user or somebody on behalf of the user can make a request with the new password especially uh, right after something goes wrong the password reset request lands into the inbox and from the request portal from the very same place you'll be able to perform password resets with no hassle at all no toggling from your service now console right after you receive a request from your incidents tab use your form context get the action done so that's what we're talking about no extra burden no need to install a password management tool it's more like a self-service operation that we're trying to do the end user gets to make a request with the provision to also specify the password and yes we've also added a layer of security to it i'll tell you what during the session Yes, password management is not going to be a problem anymore. Resets are, can be done on the fly right after you receive a password reset request. All right. And the last bit of it is the most important point. Meeting your service level agreement, making sure that you get the job done right on time, especially when it deals with something as critical as group membership management, be it adding to a group or being removed from a group. It is epitome or it is pivotal that you get it done right away why do i say that many a times most of the cases where organizations face security problems it's because their group membership was not done right it's because they caught the group membership wrong and it's because there was not timely delivery of removal or addition from a group that that's a problem that many organizations face especially when it comes to security groups that in turn uh, you know are are are, are uh, important for uh, say for example access to critical data in the organization or access to critical file folders or shares or anything for that matter yes you'd not want to play around with that yes especially you receive a request for disabling a user or having a user removed from a specific group you'd want to act on it right away when it's a security group probably the organization has found out some user doing something mischievous you'd have to act on it right away and that can be done right here through this integration not just that bit of group modification the entire user lifecycle management starting from onboarding a user managing the user's attributes things like unlocking his account or resetting the password or adding to a group or removing from a group enabling or disabling and till the very last bit of it which is deprovisioning the account yeah it's a little sad deprovisioning but yes it's got to be done so deprovisioning as well the entire array of active directory management can be done from inside your service desk service now console all right so that is the session today and how is it going to be possible it's going to be possible because of this simple game changing handshake between ad manager plus and service now the tasks that can be performed by the IT help desk or the administrator after the integration include creation of a user in Active Directory, in other platforms as well, the ones that I listed, unlocking an account that's locked out right away, resetting passwords right away, disabling or enabling accounts as per requirement, adding them or removing from groups, be it a security group or a distribution or anything for that matter, and is finally deleting the account as well. So through the session, you'll understand it's not just these basic tasks that we'll be performing. Thanks to the integration, thanks to the tight integration, a lot more is going to happen on the background, starting from creation to deletion, all right? I'm going to keep I'm not going to keep you waiting. I'm going to get straight to the integration and explain what exactly or how exactly it works and how to set it up. All right. So the integration is straightforward. It's just a simple three step process. You start off by having the AD manager plugin installed from the App Store. That's exactly what I'm going to do now. All right. So the service now App Store, you got to look for Active Directory. Looking up for Active Directory. What I'll do is in a second, I'll be sharing the a link to the ServiceNow App Store just so that you can, you know, have straight access for that, saving you trouble. So, yes, here we are Active Directory. And what do we have? The first app on the ServiceNow Store is AD Manager Plus for Active Directory. All right, so you got a little overview right here. You can always feel free to go through it. So you got to just hit get and even before you know, like magic, the app's going to come inside your console. Here we have it. So AD Manager Plus. The setup is pretty simple right after you have this application installed. 
one quick moment what I'm going to do is just for your benefit I'm going to go ahead and share the link for the application on the chat three two one and on your screen so that's the application all right so getting back to the installation so we've got the AD manager plus plugin installed once that's done mandatory have this checked have the service catalog enabled key in the server details which is the server detail of the AD manager plus application and then you go on and enable an MID server if need be all right once that's done it's a simple straightforward process key in the admin credentials for your AD manager plus application and say submit so this is going to be the first step in the two part uh, integration the first step where AD manager and service now integrate all right so the login is successful so what do we have right here so right after the integration has become successful we're able to see that we have menus underneath it all of them are user management related menus starting with creation delete disable enable all of those actions that we've been discussing so the first bit of the integration is done there's something that's remaining that we got to still do from the service now end we've initiated the integration we got to get to ad manager plus and complete the handshake all right so getting into the admin tab in ad manager plus this is the ad manager plus application for you from the admin tab we have to head to the integrations module and have the service now integration configured so we've got service now so it's going to be the administrator tab integrations service now and just key in the service now url and when you say test connection and save the connection is going to get established the two-way handshake is going to happen let's quickly check if it's through yes we have successfully connected so before i switch back to the service now console for those of you who are curious about what ad manager plus is so ad manager plus is a active directory management and reporting solution from manage engine what you can see right here is that it allows you to perform a variety of ad management actions starting from user management to computer group objects anything you any object you name it you've got the ad management uh, action right here in fact we've extended a bit to also support office 365 related management and yes we are going forward to AD reporting as well. So all these management actions that can be performed are backed up by solid reports. We've got close to 200 plus reports that come in handy for almost uh, all uh, important AD management scenarios. You've got inactive users, you can find out them. You want to find out nested group membership, you can do that. You want to find out recently logged on users and a lot more things related to password management yes so we've been talking about user onboarding password management you know things like um, attributes that pertain to a user's life cycle so all of that is covered under the ad management and the reporting section in the product you can also go on to delegate actions through uh, you know the AD delegation module where you can do a very secure delegation by not just granting access but also keeping a tight track on who's done what access and automation modules especially the ones that pertain to the lifecycle management bit are very helpful performing uh, automatic user onboarding granting privileged access just in time in fact going till the very last bit of it which is clean up automating your entire active directory cleanup so a lot more is possible if in case you're interested to know more about it just write me an email uh, I'll be more than happy to help you out with that so we are getting back to the integration admin tab so all those active directory management actions are on the way for this integration we just started out with the most used or most important uh, features that could add great value to the IT help desk. We are working on more features. We're working on incorporating a lot of other cool AD Manager Plus AD management features into this integration. All right, all these, the ones that are listed right here, it's just the beginning. What we want to do is we want to know from you, understand as to what your requirement is and work towards uh, satisfying a requirement. So yes, the integration is in place. AD Manager Plus and ServiceNow integration is done. The first step is done. The next step is assigning roles to your technician. So here comes the beautiful part. 
So not necessarily all technicians should have access to Active Directory. In fact, through this integration, I'd like you to note that there is no requirement for an explicit access or, uh, you know, you necessarily need not have those technicians on your Active Directory given access. So the AD Manager Plus application is going to do the impersonation and get the job done for you. So you necessarily you need not have those technicians has administrators with necessary privileges in Active Directory. All right, so that's the best part. And you can go a step further and say which technicians got to have what set of access or what roles in terms of the Active Directory management actions listed. Likewise, not just the technicians, from an end user point of view, the one who's making the request, you can restrict that as well. You just want your HR to have access to user creation requests you can do that you just want the end users to have access to probably say password reset request and account unlock you can specify that as well you can assign roles it's pretty simple straightforward want to try I, I want you to try that out and once that's done the most fundamental prerequisite getting the service catalog in place that we've already done during the very start we've enabled the service catalog how does the application look right after the service catalog is enabled so here we have it so the Active Directory Management application lets you perform all of this and this is the service catalog for the user Beth. All right. So Beth here is the HR in the organization. So how does it work? Beth has access to all these AD management action. Beth again is an end user. That's how we consider. Beth can make requests for user creation when it comes to onboarding. Beth can go on and make requests for addition or removal from groups, deprovisioning anything that's listed. Likewise, any user to who you grant the access can also have access to this service um, uh, catalog from where you can access the AD Manager Plus application. So the service catalog from Beth, the HR manager, Beth here is trying to have a new user onboarded. So that's the first task for the day. We're going to try and make a service request for user provisioning. All right. So what do we have right here? We've got a simple form. All right. OK, so the form has the domain name selected. Great. It's got something called as a template or oh, it asks me to select a template. OK, what do we have right here? We've got templates for different departments. Now that seems interesting. So let me go on with the first template that was pre-selected, the basic one. Let me check what exactly it does. So I'm gonna onboard a new user, all right? So the request is for say John Lennon, all right? And the HR is making a request to onboard John Lennon, who's a marketing <coughs> manager. Pretty simple, just a basic form for the HR to make a request for user creation. First name, last name, password, title, and yes, a template is selected default. I'm not going further. It's just the basic template that's selected. It says 360 degree user provisioning, and I'm curious what exactly 360 degree user provisioning can do for me. So I'm going ahead and hitting the request, I'm making the request, Wonderful. The request is submitted. So now getting back to my console as the administrator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my incidents and check if I have received a user onboarding request. Mm -hmm. All right, so here I have a request for user creation. A new request it says create a user in active directory with the following details i'm going to get into the request check who the request is from i'm the administrator right now i can be the help desk as well if i have the necessary role assigned okay it says create a user all right what more ha huh. it's also got the details of the user it says john lennon marketing manager for the organization with the 360 degree user provisioning template. That's the pre-selected template, all right? So I'm gonna quickly see what it can do for me. And I right click on the form context menu, what do I see? I see all the AD management actions right here. So creation, deletion, all of those AD management actions. And this is a request for user onboarding. So lucky guess, the pick is going to be 
user creation no doubt creation of users what did i tell you the forms are intelligent it automatically recognized the input and it's filled out all those required data for me and all i got to do is just check this once i'm happy and satisfied with this i can go on and say submit and user creation is going to happen like magic so i want you to remember it says 360 degree user provisioning let's see what happens i submit the request so AD Manager Plus is being communicated and Active Directory in turn is being talked to. ServiceNow has been, um, is, is, is sending out the call to Active Directory. John Lennon is the new user who's getting provisioned and marketing is the department to which uh, John Lennon is pro being provisioned to. New Johnny John Lennon Active Directory account on its way. So there you go, the work is done. So it says, John Lennon is successfully created. Great. What does it also say? It says G Suite user has also been created. Office 365 has also been created. And to add to that, it's also been directory synced. How could all this be possible? It was just a simple, plain request for user creation from the HR. All right. The help desk or the administrator had just to look into the request and say, OK. And like magic, the users created an active directory and all other applications are also provisioned but then i don't trust this i'm going to quickly get back to ad manager and check if the users actually created how could it happen so fast so john let me look for john lennon <clears throat> there you go all right so i've got a user john lennon And what do we have right here? We've got the user account created. So it just took close to what? Under a minute, the request was made. The request was looked by the uh, looked into or handled by the IT helpers technician. And yes, even before you know it, the account is created. Something that you must notice right here is the attributes also are filled out. And that's because the user provisioning templates, all right, explicitly or proactively pick all those required uh, attributes and have them mapped into Active Directory. So here in terms of the account that got just created for John Lennon, a G Suite application is also provisioned and Office 365 license is also provisioned. So we're talking about a 360 degree user provisioning. To take it a level further, when I'm explaining the user creation templates, I'll also talk about a bit on customizing the licenses as well at the very beginning. So your entire user onboarding is not just simplified, but also streamlined. You can have access or you can track whatever has been happening. I'm going to get back and check on the request once more to see if there's something else that I can do. All right. So the HR just made a request right now for user provisioning. All right. Yes. In this case, by default, the template was user 360 provisioning, which included provisioning across different applications. So I guess you might have already figured out by now 360 across applications. G apps, G suit, uh, your Office 365 and all that along with Exchange Mailbox. So when I click this, when the HR really wants to provision users in different departments, the templates right here are going to be very helpful. All right. So what do we have right here? We've got templates for different departments. I'm going to say marketing department. All right. I'm going to create a new request this time. Let's see how different it is. All right. It's going to be for Charlie. Password keyed in. So it's the marketing department. I'm saying again, marketing manager. The organization is on a recruiting spree. They're recruiting a lot of marketing managers. Ha. Submitted the request. Yes, the request is forwarded. Switching back to the admin console to see if I've received the request. Incidents to check if I've received the latest request from the HR. Yes, I've got it right there. Mm hmm right here form context menu creation of user what do we have right here we've got a different template this time it says marketing department and it's for charlie when i say create ad user we are able to see that the template selected is the marketing department automatically every attribute is also filled out just the basic attributes from the request all right i'm not going to 
alter or tweak anything in this request i'm going to just like that go ahead and say submit and when i show you what exactly happens on the background i'm guessing you should be surprised so i'm saying submit so the user provisioning is happening on the background ad manager is doing all the weightlifting for you let's count down five four and even before you know yes the user account has been successfully created so this time the only difference is the template that was chosen was different it was very specific last time it was a generic template this time it's a template specific to the marketing department and let's see how different this time it is so here ad manager plus lets you search for objects through the um, extensive elastic search that we've got all right just just one minute Charlie is the new user looking up for Charlie to see if Charlie is onboarded wonderful So we've got Charlie right here. His account is in place Let me quickly get into his account and check if the attributes are filled out What do we have right here we've got the description already filled out that's surprising when I get into the container, I'm able to see that again, his container is mapped rightly to the marketing department. Okay. When I get into the accounts tab, I'm also able to see that his group membership is also pre-filled. How did this happen? Is there anything more? Yes, from the contacts tab, I'm able to see that his marketing manager is fixed. His head of the department is also mapped automatically. His department is mapped, his title is mapped. So all these, attributes i never filled out any of these attributes or neither did the hr making the request fill out any of these attributes all of this was possible because the user creation templates in ad manager plus got to do all the weightlifting in the background so the user creation templates from ad manager plus are going to be your lifeline when it comes to user onboarding so you can very clearly create user-friendly templates when it comes to different departments starting from your HR, IT, marketing, sales. You can go on and create department-specific templates. And since you're the administrator or the technician or help desk involved, you can go on and pre-create these templates with the right attributes. So what do I mean when I say pre-create? We just saw Charlie having attributes pertaining to the marketing department automatically populated. If it were to be done manually right after having received the request, one after the other, all those attributes should have been filled out. And not just that, we saw things like group membership being rightly filled out. So there comes our advantage. So you necessarily need not take the pains of talking to different departments to figure out which group should Charlie be a part of or any user being onboarded to be a part of. So all of that can be pre-configured from the templates and the necessary stakeholders can be given access to AD Manager Plus to do the tweaking. So here, I'm gonna get into sales department for a change and see if it's different from any different from the marketing department template. Getting into the sales department template, I'm able to see that the description is pertaining to the sales department. The container holds the sales department OU. And when it comes to the accounts tab, I'm able to see that the group membership is also pertaining to the sales department. So likewise, I'm guessing you already have an idea as to how this template works. So all those important Active Directory attributes that you're very well aware of that can be pre-filled can be put into this simple straightforward layout all right, simple, straightforward layout. And the best part is you can also have Google Apps and Office 365 provisioned simultaneously right at the very start. When I get into the Office 365, I can go on and assign applications as per my requirement. If it's my sales department, I can very specifically say only these applications, say Microsoft Planner or Office Online should be uh, granted to executives being onboarded through sales department template so that saves me a lot of time so if it's if let's just doing a simple math so this could have ideally taken me nothing less than an hour if i were to do it manually so this is for one user the quantum of users that keep coming into the organization say 10 users in one go need to be onboarded you spend 10 hours but then we got this done under five minutes so the entire process could get over in less than an hour what could take you an entire day can get over in an entire in just an hour so that's the kind of benefit or that's the kind of value we are trying to offer to you right now so that's possible because of this integration 
Yes. And that again got through because we were able to choose the right template. And mind me, do note templates are not just pertaining to departments. Templates can be for any of your requirement. It can in fact be role specific. You just have new joinees and they are trainees. They need just basic accesses. You can create or configure a template for that. You have someone being onboarded as a top executive. You can do that as well. So the templates are fully customizable and 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 they are also smart. There are certain things called as the creation rules. The creation rules are going to help you specify criteria. You can say if the department is going to be marketing from the request, fill out all those attributes pertaining to marketing department. You can do that for other attributes that you want to dynamically alter. You can do that. Say you key in the title. You say marketing manager is the title. All right, you can go on and specify certain values in Active Directory automatically from this creation rule form that's available. All that's that's listed. So this is just an added benefit of having user creation templates in place. For more details on user creation templates, I'd be more than happy to help you out with that right there. Just just shoot out an email or just drop me a message on the chat and I can get in touch with you to have, you know give you an overview as to what more it can do. We were talking about uh, something very interesting in the very start. We were talking about ensuring that the uh, duplicates are avoided or standardizing naming formats that is also going to be possible. All right. So let me quickly get back to the service uh, request that I just received. I had onboarded the user by the name Charlie Path. All right. OK, so there I had a request. The request was catered to. <clears throat> and in fact, the product went on to do all the hard work on the background and also keyed in every required AD attribute pertaining to that specific user who I intended to onboard and also left me a very clean trail. So it says the user has been successfully created. He's been put into this department and all attributes are filled out. All right. I'm going to do the exact same action once more for the same user. So assuming that another user with the same credentials is coming into the organization so that's the problem that we will be facing if i have the templates configured rightly they're going to stop that action right there because the templates here the user management templates the ones that I've, I'm, I'm explaining right now have the provision to find out the logon name and see if there's a match from the request that's being made. If there's already a user with the same name, log or name being the unique attribute, you can very well prevent a duplicate at the very start. You can also do a forest wide or a domain wide duplicate check. You can choose to either alter the naming format of the new user being onboarded. You can choose a different naming format or, or as a matter of fact, stop the entire user creation completely up to you. That's again going to be possible because the request gets forwarded through the template and the templates act more like a sanity filter. All right. Again, is it possible to have the standardized formats for names? Yes. So here we're able to see the logon names being pre-specified through the formats and through the input that gets received right here the standardized naming format is going to get applied at the very start likewise there are a lot more customizations that are possible through this template a very user friendly uh, approach we've done we made sure that it's simple and the usability is on high regard all right so we've got the first task for the day done we've got charlie pot onboarded uh, successfully into the marketing department also accounts provisioned across platforms and all relevant ad attributes automatically mapped like magic once more for you one last time checking into the user to just make sure that everything is right just so that you get to see what it could do for you. A simple user creation request, basic attributes, right template selected, and every important attribute is already mapped. So I totally understand by this time you might have, uh, you know, realized what sort of value proposition we are offering right here. So user onboarding is successfully done. What more can be done? So that was one important use case for the day. The next one, let me take one from the end user point of view. Let's talk about password resets and account unlocks. Ha. Again, a user makes a request. In this case, it's going to be the uh, end user making a request for password reset. Pretty simple, the dashboard, 
password reset request all right the user can key in the new password match the new password also as a best practice this can be checked the checkbox that's going to add an extra layer of security so when the reset is being initiated by someone else all right it's, it could be the head of the department or the line manager requesting for a password reset for another user the end user the password right here is filled out just to make sure that the user gets to alter the password and nothing goes wrong this can be enabled so the next time when the user uh, logs in with the new password they are prompted for a definite password change all right so i'm going to go ahead and look for the same user that i created charlie charlie is my hero for the day checking for charlie to check oh wonderful so the product goes on to dynamically look up for the user all his attributes are also right here mentioned fetched from active directory and this is possible because of the integration all right to just clarity for just clarity i'm going to search for another user john so that you see what it can do so we've got john abraham john lennon johnny depp all right so you can go on and select any user from this list as per your requirement and perform the password reset all right so here charlie is the one who needs attention so yes so charlie's account has to be reset so charlie gets his attention say submit the request has been successfully submitted to the it team switching back I'm going to go ahead and check if I've received a request for user password reset. So the request was made for a specific user. The username is already there. The password that has to be set is also available in the very same request. Now, all I have to do is check if I've received the request. I'm the administrator right now getting into my request or incidents right here and yes there you go i've got the request for password reset so here we've got the password reset request wonderful so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly show you how the reset happens when i say reset any password like magic, all the data is already filled out. And the best part is it's encrypted. So that way it's also safe and it's not plain text. So whoever is making the password reset or initiating the request knows the password and not even the help desk knows what this is. And as again, a security measure, the user has to change his password, his or her password upon next logon. That's also enabled. And when I say submit, the user's password is going to be changed. Before I hit submit, I'm going to talk about something important. So we were talking about error messages, right? So let's see what happens when I say submit, right? So what do we have right here? We've got the user's password reset successfully. So the job is done, but then there seems to be a problem. There seems to be an error. And what exactly is that? The error message says the user can't change the password because the password attribute is set to never be able to change or the user cannot change his password. That's the attribute set in Active Directory. Therefore, the user cannot change his password upon next logon. So here is the competitive advantage that I'm talking about. Here is the differentiating element that I'm talking about. So it gives me clear insight as to what's actually going behind as, as to what's what to expect so now that this problem has creeped in i very clearly know that there's some tweaking that i need to do with charlie's account so i'm going to get into ad manager plus get into charlie's account see if i can undo whatever wrong happened so here when i get into the accounts tab i'm able to see that the password attribute is set to be not changed so here the user cannot change his password is enabled so i'm going to change that uncheck that and say update so now when i execute the same action let's see how different it works so i had the password reset done but then the specific action which i wanted which was user being able to change the password upon next logon that didn't work out well so that 
I understood based on the uh, error message that I received. So I got back to Active Directory Manager and got that resolved. So the whole cycle is complete. Now all I got to do is get back to the request, perform the reset password for the same action, for the same request maybe. Let's see how different at this point in time the request works, all right? So yes, I've got the uh, request right here. I'm going to say form context. I'm going to say a reset AD password. And then I'm going to say submit to check what exactly happens this time. So yes, this time it's successfully modified. So we are done with the second task for the day, which is resetting passwords. So that again is over. So we've been talking about onboarding users. That's done. Password resets is done. We've got a few more tasks for the day. The next one is going to be a request for user being added to a specific group. All right. So that's the next request that we'll be talking about. So here getting into the requests portal user being added to the group. So that's the next action that I want to perform adding to a group. So We've been we've been talking enough about uh, users being added to group and the importance of that. So adding to a specific group here, Charlie was onboarded to the marketing department. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that Charlie has the right uh, group membership. So here I'm going to look up for the groups, which is the marketing related groups. So this is the end user making a request for adding to a specific group, the one with the corresponding uh, or someone who's got the role for making a request. The service catalog is enabled for this user. So this could probably be the line manager of that specific department making a request for one of his subordinates to get access to critical groups. All right. So marketing related groups are selected. This is the line manager. Assuming this is the line manager wanting to request access for his subordinate Charlie to get access into these marketing related groups. So Charlie is selected and the request is submitted. So now that the line manager submitted the request, the administrator has to look into it. So this time around, let's see how different uh, the incidents look. All right. <clears throat> OK, one quick moment there. All right, so I've got a request right here that says add a user to a specific group. So that's the request that I've received. <clears throat> so when I look into the request, I'm able to see that it's for addition to specific groups. Great. Right click and say they required AD action in this case at the group. Very evident. The administrator is performing the action. And yes, even before you know it, the user selected the right groups are specified. All I got to do is just look into it, check if everything is OK. Since I'm the administrator, I can always choose to edit it or add more groups or remove groups. That's up to me. But then this time I'm trusting the uh, line manager and I'm going ahead with the request, processing it straightforward, saying submit. <clears throat> Let's see if Charlie gets access to those groups. Oh, wonderful. So it says successfully modified, which means Charlie has been added to these two groups. So I'm going to get back to AD manager check if Charlie's received that right group membership looking up for Charlie. Do we have Charlie? Yes, we have. Uh, the group membership can be found out from the accounts tab. Switching to the accounts tab, I'm able to see. Membership, do we have the required groups? Wonderful, like you already guessed. Yes, the group has been included. So likewise, the whole process of Active Directory Management now looks like a child's play. You get a request and back to the request is going to be an intelligent or a smart request because the HR or the corresponding requester gets to perform half of your work at the very start while making the request during the course of the request for user creation. All that the HR had to do was select the right template and key in the new user creation request for password reset. specify the password, the user for group membership addition, 
say the new groups to be added and yes the name of the user for who the groups have to be added and the request is made so the whole process now seems to be a lot easier and all that the IT help desk or the administrators got to do is just look at the request say okay and like magic in Active Directory every action that was promised is being performed so there are a few more things i'd want to cover before we end today's session or before we wrap up today's session something that's pretty interesting is the disable and delete users very important why i'll tell you so in an active directory the biggest challenge any administrator faces is doing a complete clean wipe what do i talk, mean when i say clean wipe so deletion and deprovisioning are not just one step processes they are more like a checklist that an administrator has to cater to when a user is leaving the organization so let's say it's time that charlie leaves the organization it's kind of sad but then yeah things happen so charlie's got to leave the organization but then during the course of his uh, life uh, lifetime in the organization all right during his employment charlie had access to multiple other applications charlie got a uh, office 365 account charlie had a g suit account he had a mailbox for him yes and not just that there were a lot more created added to charlie's active directory and i want all of that to be completely removed so i have the provision to delete not just the ad account but also set deletion for google apps and skype for business or g suit as well move or delete the home folders say delete the roaming folders every attribute that could require attention to that could be a part of my checklist my deep provisioning checklist all of that can be covered through the disable delete policy as a part of the admin setting in ad manager plus when i get to the disable tab i'll be able to show you a lot more so if it's the account just being disabled you not want to delete the mailbox but just relevantly or uh, go ahead and uh, you just want to uh, you know pause things for a while revoke or disable yes so delete and disable both of it are covered it's going to be a clean wipe that we're talking about no zombies coming back to attack you so we're talking about a, a, a security uh, you know benefit right here all right so getting back again uh, to the disable delete request all right so disable delete request this time it's a delete request i'd want to show you so again it's charlie who has to leave the organization so it's kind of sad so charlie is the user i'm saying charlie and saying submit the request has been submitted Switching back to the admin console to check if I've received the incident request. <clears throat> so this time around, I'm going to have a request for user deletion. Yes, I've got the request. Getting into the request. The request is for deprovisioning Charlie's account. I've got that very clear. Say delete ad user the user is already selected and i'm going to go ahead and hit submit so here we've got a prompt a second prompt since this is a very critical active directory action deleting is kind of important uh, deleting is kind of uh, critical so we've got a second prompt just to ensure that nothing goes wrong and when i say okay charlie is no more in my active directory so yes, we've got, got to the very end of today's session. We've gone ahead and discussed every attribute that uh, this integration offers. User creation, password reset, uh, you know, going further, adding users to groups or removing them from groups. And in fact, for that matter, a complete 360 degree user provisioning to disabling. So when I said the application and the integration performs a lot more than what's right here, that's exactly what I meant. 360 degree user provisioning, different applications being created at the same time. Disable delete policies that can also help you get a better ROI for your investment. What am I talking about? Office 365 licenses automatically removed. You know, you need not wait till your auditors find out that's something wrong. You need not wait till your finance team points that out. You can go on, set disabled delete policies and ensure that it's a clean wipe and also you can be a ninja when it comes to meeting your service level agreements. Get your group membership managed at the right time, right after you receive a request and be on dot. All right. So here we have one quick review. 
So the requester portal or the service catalog lets you make requests for all of this. You receive a request, act on it, perform a 360 degree onboarding or any AD management task intelligently. And it's going to be your form context menu from where you get to do this. Yes. So here we are. I'd like to call it the essential toolkit that every IT help desk needs, especially for Active Directory management. I'll go forward and have this uh, presentation sent across this specific slide deck that's got the exclusive download link to AD Manager Plus upon your request. All you got to do is just drop me a message on chat right now with your email address and I'd be more than happy to send this presentation and the video recording as well. So you can get the service now app, uh, the specific the, uh, app, AD Manager Plus app right here from this download link. All right. So I hope today's session on integrating Active Directory with your service now through uh, AD Manager Plus has been useful, All right? That being said, we look forward to help you make the most of this specific uh, integrations. Thanks for being such a wonderful audience today. We are available at the chat to take all your questions right now. And yes, as promised, we're going to go ahead and send out to you the video for all of those who request and yeah, the presentation deck as well. In, in case you want to, uh, you know, try out more, you have questions, you have suggestions, feel free to make use of the survey at the end of the, uh, you know, presentation. You can key in your feedback. You can tell us how you want this integration to grow. What more features are you looking at? Or you have a specific requirement. You want a specific feature to be incorporated in this active directory integration that can definitely be uh, done. Yes. Thank you so much once again. You've all been great. Such a wonderful audience. This is Jay. Uh, your presenter for the day is signing off. You all have a great day.